So we already know in a ZBrush session that your tools are always available to you. Anything you've worked on, you can always go back and get. However, look, what if you close out of ZBrush? If you close out of ZBrush, you will lose what you're working on if it isn't saved. Now to talk about saving in ZBrush, let's do a little exercise. What I'm going to do is I'm going to have this object selected, the one we've been sculpting on. I'm going to go up here to Clone, and that's going to give me two identical versions of my object. Now one's going to have undo history, and the other one isn't going to have undo history. Another thing I can do is I can go up here to Copy Tool, and then I can hit Paste Tool, and that'll also give me essentially a clone. Now those actually serve different functions. One of these is going to clone a subtool, and the other one's going to copy an entire tool stack with subtools. We haven't gotten subtools yet, uh, but I'll explain that more when we get there. So now we have three different versions of this tool. So let's go ahead and select one, and we'll go ahead and we'll go ahead and sculpt. Oh, I guess I should explain this. So as we're sculpting on here, uh, I went over here, I tapped S on my keyboard, and I made my draw size very big. You can also go up here and increase and decrease your draw size. When we talk about brush basics, we'll get more into that. But essentially what I'm trying to do is make two very, or three very distinct objects here. So here's one. I'm going to click on this one here. And this time I'm going to hold down Alt and I'm going to sculpt and that's going to put in large divots in my object here. And we'll finally we'll go down to this last one here and this time I'm going to hold down Shift and we're going to smooth our object. So now we have a very smooth object, we have a very lumpy object, and then we got a very cratered tool. So I've worked on three different tools in this one ZBrush session that we've sat down and done. Let's say, you know what? The smooth one and the cratered one, I don't really like. I do want to keep this one, however. All you need to do is make sure this one is selected in your tool palette, so it's the one you're currently working on. You can go up here to Tool, Save As, and you can save this anywhere. The default location, C, Program Files, Pixel Logic, ZBrush 2021, Z Tools, and this is on a PC, I'm not sure where this is on the Mac, but if you save it in here, let's go ahead and rename this Sphere Test. I'm gonna go down here and I'm gonna hit Save. And what that did is save this as a Z tool, a .ztl file. Now, if I close out of ZBrush right now, I will have saved the Z tool, I can bring this in later, it's gonna have all the information I need. However, I will lose these two. If I want to save all three of these as separate tools, what you'll have to do is either select this tool and go up here to Save As, Tool Save As, and then save it, and then go over here and save this one as Sphere Test Crater. Select this tool, go in here to Save As, Sphere Test Smooth, and now all three of these have been saved. You'll also notice all of their names have been changed. When you went in here and saved them, it renamed them for you. Now there's a caveat to that once we get into subtools, but for now, just know that when you save the tool, if you only have one tool, and in this case it's just a sphere, it'll rename it for you. So for now, let's go ahead and close out of our ZBrush session. So just click this X in the upper right hand corner. And it's going to ask you, do you want to save changes to your ZBrush project before closing? Now, ZBrush projects we're going to get to in just a second, but I'm going to hit No. Go ahead and restart ZBrush. You see, ZBrush starts up, and you're also going to notice that startup material has defaulted to MatCap Gray. Now, by default, your lightbox may pop up. If you want to, again, hit the comma key on your keyboard or just click this lightbox button in the upper left-hand corner. So now let's go and grab those spheres we were working on. You can go in here to Load Tool. So we have our tool menu. We're going to load a tool that we saved. So previously we'd gone to Tool Save As. Now we're going to load a tool. It probably defaulted back to that C Program Files folder. If we sort by Date Modified, you're going to see here's the spheres that we saved. Test, Test Crater, Test Smooth. Now if I want to load all of these, I can hold down Shift and select these, or tap the first one and then Shift Select the bottom one and it'll select all of these. Then go ahead and hit Open. And now you're going to see we have our all of our spheres loaded. So if I want to go back here to this one, we can just tap that one to select it, make it the current tool, drag it on our canvas, go into edit mode, and now you can see we can continue sculpting on our object.
if we want to sculpt on any of our other ones, we can go here to the crater. We can hold down Alt, sculpt on our object. We can go back to the smooth one, hold down Shift, and continue to smooth on it. Of course, you don't have to smooth this one. You can sculpt on it if you'd like, or hold down Alt, or hold down Shift to smooth. Again, we'll get into brushes in a bit. But that's essentially how tools work in ZBrush. You can sculpt on a Polymesh 3D, and if you want to save your progress, you can go in here to Tool, Save As, and Save as a Tool. Now, because we saved it in this particular location, there's a cool thing you can do. If you go in here to the comma key, you're going to see we have Project tab selected by default. If we go over here to the Tool tab, when we save those tools, it threw them right in here. So if we want to load those up, all we have to do is double click in here, or you can double click on anything in here, like for instance the dog Z tool, just double click that. Hit the comma key to go out of light box, and now we have a dog Z tool loaded up in our scene. It's already a Polymesh 3D, it's not a primitive, there's no primitive settings for a dog in ZBrush. So you can go through here and you can just start sculpting on the dog. And just like we were when we were working on our spheres, if you want to save your progress of what you've sculpted on your dog, make sure you go up here to Tool, Save As, and then Save It As. You don't want to save over the dog. If you, if you double click Dog Z Tool, it's going to save this version over the default dog that's in there. In fact, if you have a folder in your computer you want to save to, you don't want to save it to your Lightbox folder, you can always go in here, it's like put it on your desktop, and you can click here and you can say name it something and now on your desktop you'll have a Z tool of a dog. Now you may be thinking well other programs I can hit control S and if you hit control S it will go to a save dialog however if you look down here it's gonna say ZPR if we cancel out of that and do tool save as you're gonna see that's a ZTL this is a Z tool if you hit control S that's going to be a Z project. So let's go ahead and cancel out of that. Where Z project is, is underneath file, save as, the default is control S, that's going to save a Z project. So now a Z tool, as you've already seen, is just a simple asset saving. So if you want to save your dog, and you want to save what you've sculpted, and you want to save anything, basically anything you've done in this menu, like poly paint, sculpting, layers, sub tools, that's going to be a Z tool. If you want to save all of the tools you've worked on in this session, so see so how we have multiple things open. If you go up here to File, Save As, that's going to save a Z project. So let's call this Test. And now let's again close out a ZBrush. We'll say no, we don't want to save because we've already saved our project. We're going to open ZBrush back up. And let's go ahead and hit our comma key. Now if I go in here to File, Open, let's go to our desktop. Here's our Test Z project. If we double click that, that's going to have the dog we were working on. It saved the camera angle even that we saved the project as, and all of our other Z tools are available to us. So you may ask, well, why would I ever not want to save a Z project? Well, generally speaking, I rarely save Z projects. What I usually do is if I'm working on the dog and I'm sculpting the dog, and once I'm done, I don't need all this other stuff in my scene. Usually it's just the dog and the subtools associated with the dog that I care about. So in that instance, I'm going to go to Tool Save As and save all that as my dog file. However, if you do want to save your dog Z tool and all the other Z tools and your camera angle, and your material settings, and your lighting settings, and your render settings, file, save as is what you're going to want. If you're just saving out a sculpt or an asset that you're working on, tool save as is usually enough. As you get more comfortable in ZBrush and how the file system works, probably you'll resort to saving a Z tool, but if you want, you can always go up here to file, save as, and save a Z project. Z projects will probably be a little heavier, especially if you have a bunch of stuff over here that you don't aren't necessarily going to want to use. So generally speaking, I tell people tool save as is usually what you want to get used to. Now one caveat with a Z project, uh, if we hit the comma key and we go in here uh, to the tool tab, and it's like, oh, you know what? Let's bring in this demo soldier. So I'm going to double click on this and no problem. 
I have my demo soldier, and I also have my dog working all the spheres that I've been working on and the demo soldier. However, if I click the comma key and I go in here to project, and I want to open up maybe the demo anime head, if I double click it, it's going to tell me I'm going to basically get rid of everything over here in your tool palette because I'm opening up a Z project. When ZBrush opens a Z project, it wants to remove everything else out of your scene. It's assuming that everything in the Z project is all you want to see and all you want to load in the ZBrush. So if I click no, it's going to open the demo anime head. I've got it available to me, but I've lost everything else. So again, if you want a little more flexibility, loading in the Z tool, so our desktop dog working Z tool, we can double click this. We still have our anime head and we have our dog working. And if we go back to our C program files, pixel logic, ZBrush 2021 Z tools menu, I can load up the sphere test we did and I can even click in the comma key, basically bring in any Z tool that I want. Double click it, hit the comma key again, and now we're just loading up a bunch of Z tools. But again, if we hit the comma key, go into project, and we'll load up that demo anime head again, it's just going to blow everything else away. Now there's a caveat to that. If you go up here, you're going to see there is a load tools from project. So at any point, if somebody sent you a Z project and you're like, I, I want to keep my current session, I want to keep the Z tools I'm working on, but I also want to load in somebody else's work, and they gave me a Z project, all you have to do is go to load tools from project, Again, we'll go to our desktop, we'll load up our Z project, we save our test Z project. This is going to have our dog, our Z sphere, and here's our anime head that we loaded in earlier. So that's a way you can get around having to delete everything before loading up a project. You can just go up here to load tools from project. Now there's another file you can save out of ZBrush, and that's a document save as, and that's going to save a ZBR file or your document file. Essentially, your document is going to be your camera angle, any material settings that you've had, and any lighting information you've had. If I'm saving that type of information, like my materials and my lighting and my camera, I'm just going to go up here to File Save As and Save a Z Project. Rarely these days do I ever go into Document Save As, but I figured I'd bring it up. Now, I don't want to confuse anybody, but you can also go in here to File Save As to save a Z Project. You can also go down here to Canvas and say Save As to save a document. You can also go in here to Tool Save As to save a Z tool. So instead of going in here to Tool Save As or Document Save As, you can go in here to File, choose Canvas or Tool, and that'll go ahead and save it as well. Now there's other things you can save in here that we'll get to possibly in a bit, depending on how relevant it is to an intro class. But just while you're starting out, Project and Tool are the big file formats that you'll really need to worry about to save your progress. From here on out, probably 99% of the time, I'm gonna tell you to go up here to Tool, Save As, and Save on your progress. So if we go through here and we hold down Alt, and we kind of push in, and we start sculpting, and we wanna save our progress, I'm gonna say go up here to Tool, Save As, and save your progress as a Z tool. But for now, I'll go ahead and hit Cancel. Now, speaking of saving progress and saving files, there's one thing I want to bring to your attention, and that's this quick save button up here. You're going to see when I hover over that, you're going to see the hotkey is 9, so if you hit 9 on your keyboard, that'll go ahead and run a quick auto save. If you want to see where those are, hit comma key on your keyboard or click the light box button, and then go all the way over here to the right where it says quick save. If you click on that, you're going to see you have a bunch of different save files in there, and you'll also notice they're Z projects. So what that means is whenever you hit quick save, it's going to save your camera settings, all the tools you have available over here, any material or lighting settings, basically a snapshot of your ZBrush session. So very, very useful. You also notice if you click on these actual files, you're going to see this is where those are stored on your computer. So if you navigate to the folder, see users public document ZBrush data 2021, you go in here to quick save, you're going to see here's our Z projects. And right now, they're not very big. They're about 10 meg to 20k. However, you can start working on files that get pretty big in ZBrush. The reason I bring that up is if you go in here to Preferences and scroll down to where it says Quick Save, there's a couple settings in here you need to be made aware of. 
The first one is maximum duration. Essentially, while you're working in ZBrush, it's going to save every 20 minutes regardless of what's going on. So if you're in the middle of sculpting, it's going to run a quick save. Now, depending on the file size that you're working on and the computer speed that you're using, this could just be a quick blip, or it could kind of take you out and kind of be annoying. I tend to leave this at 20 minutes, but if you want to play it safe and you're working on smaller, faster saving files, you can lower this. If you're working on heavier files and you find that that's a little bit annoying, maybe you want to raise this up a little bit. Beneath that, you're going to see rest duration. Essentially, this is telling ZBrush, if I'm ever not touching ZBrush, if I went to the bathroom or getting something to eat, or I walk away from my keyboard for a minute, go ahead and run a quick save for me. And you're going to see it set to one, which is literally one minute of no ZBrush use, it'll do a quick save. Now going back to that file size, your max quick save files is set to a thousand. That means it's going to store a thousand quick saves before it goes and starts deleting your old ones. Depending on the files that you're working on and how heavy they are, this can add up fast. So if you're limited on hard drive space, you may want to set this to a more reasonable number. I usually keep it around 50. And again, anytime I change anything in my configuration, preferences, I change this to 50, I'm going to go back up here to the top underneath preferences config, hit store config, and hit OK. Now going back to that restoration, this may have happened to you already, if you leave ZBrush alone for a minute, number one, it's going to run a quick save, and number two, it's also going to throw a screen saver on. Essentially, if ZBrush is just sitting on your computer and you're not using it, it's going to replace ZBrush with user work. If you don't like that, go ahead and again, just turn screen saver off, go back up here to config, hit store config, and then OK. Incidentally, if ZBrush ever crashes while you're using it, this quick save area in your light box is where your recovery files will be. So you'll have a recovered Z tool, a recovered Z document, and a recovered Z project. Just click comma key or go to your light box, go to quick save, and you can load up any, any crash files. I rarely lose work in ZBrush. Even if it crashes, I can usually go right back in here, double click on that recovery Z tool, and I'm good to go. Now let's go ahead and hit the comma key. 